All right, guys, welcome in our next video. I have here with me today a very special guest, a president of Mr. Olympiad, and welcome. Thank you. You know, it's great. To, it's great to be back here at Olympia Weekend. It's great to have you guys here with us. Nebi is such a big partner for us, and um, making sure everybody looks great. And you guys, for many years, have been designing the jackets and the warm-up suits for our athletes. And uh, I know we appreciate it. I know the athletes love it. But uh, we got a big weekend plan this week. Yeah, we do appreciate this cooperation as well. It's a big deal for us as well. Did you find it difficult this year to organize such event comparing perhaps to, to 2019 when you didn't have to struggle with COVID so much? Yeah, there were, there were a lot of challenges this year. Um, really, there was challenges for all of us. There was challenges for you, there was challenges for us. Um, but uh, this was a unique circumstance because in 2020, um, every week things changed and we never really knew for sure where we were at. And um, only a few weeks ago, we found out that Las Vegas, which of course was the home of the Olympia for many years, um, wasn't going to allow us to have an audience. And obviously it's very important for us to be able to give fans the chance to experience Olympia weekend. And uh, we wanted to be able to do that. And um, so we had to make um, a last minute decision yeah. to move the event here to Central Florida, um, Orlando. And it's turned out to be a great, um, a great home for the event. And the good news is, fans will be able to come. And we're doing it very carefully. Um, we're trying to be as uh, safe as possible. I know we all have our masks on. You and I just took ours off to do this interview for a few minutes, but um, yes. there's a lot of policies to keep everybody safe and to keep the crowd smaller and uh, to give the uh, event a chance to uh, happen in a pretty fun way. Yeah, you, I'm glad you mentioned uh, the self-protection we are trying with on to make the space between so we don't have to wear it at least on the interview right after the interview is over of course we're going to protect ourselves um do you think that if you're gonna like the event in the orlando can you imagine to make mr olympia 2021 in orlando or do you want to come back with mr olympia yeah you know we, we, we think about that a lot i think when you have any kind of business or any kind of event you always have to constantly evaluate and make the best decision. You know, we have an owner named Jake Wood and a, and a team that gets involved in that process. And uh, for us, it's just very important to make sure that um, the event is in the right place. And I think until we finish this weekend and we see how the event, you know, yeah. plays here, and then we'll have a better idea as to whether or not this is a good home. I think we're gonna hold off on making any choices until we get through this weekend and see, because we still love our home in Vegas. Vegas is a lot of fun, <laughs> and um, so we're keeping all the doors open, and uh, you know yeah. we'll see. But it wasn't uh, always like that in Vegas. You went also out of the U.S. for Mr. Olympia back in the 80s. Back in the 80s, yeah. The event for many years went from city to city yeah. around the world, and I know everybody loves that, especially you guys would love to see the Olympia <laughs> yeah. um, over there. But you know, for us, we found a home in Las Vegas, yeah. and it worked out great. And for 20 some years, we were in Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay. The Orleans and this year we would have been at the Planet Hollywood um, but now this is sort of a situation where we had to figure out a way to make this year work and um, who knows I think anything's possible yeah um, regarding maybe 80s and 70s when the Mr. Olympia was traveling from, from city to city uh, that was time when Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually the yeah. leading uh, figure of Mr. Olympia do you believe that Arnold uh, kicked out the, all the fame around Mr. Olympia, that he was the person that started this famous show? Arnold um, is a significant part of everything that we do. Um, Arnold won our contest seven times, and, uh, and along the way he built uh, a lot of visibility for the Olympia, and of course then his career in Hollywood and becoming governor of California and all the things that Arnold has done, even with his own events at the Arnold Classic. Um, Arnold has been a tremendous ambassador for all of us. I think he's made, he's created opportunities for companies like yours, he's created opportunities for events like ours, um, for media. And one of my other responsibilities is I oversee Muscle and Fitness magazine. So I think Arnold is a big part of, of that success and, uh, and we just really enjoy working with him whenever we can. Yeah, so that was a question about past. Let's talk a bit more about future. Um, what do you think is the future of bodybuilding and where is the Mr. Olympia heading? What's the goals? Um, perhaps maybe some new divisions. You know, I could imagine myself in the category of fitness YouTuber walking around. Uh, <laughs> nothing like that? Well, you know, <laughs> I will say this, that, you know, Jim Mannion, who oversees the IFBB professional league, he's constantly trying to identify ways to grow the sport, to reach new audiences, to make sure there's divisions for all types of physiques to compete in. 
whether you're a men's physique, classic physique, we've brought back the Miss Olympia, so for female bodybuilding. So that's really what this is all about. This is making sure that every body type has an opportunity to have a spotlight shine on it and to compete. So that's what we're always trying to do. So when you talk about what's the future of bodybuilding, the future of bodybuilding, to me, is reaching more audiences and making sure that this lifestyle is available um, to everyone around the world, no matter what your body type is, as long as you share a passion for training and nutrition. And uh, we want to make sure that here at the IFBB Pro League and the NPC and the Olympia, that uh, you know there's an opportunity for you. Yeah. Guys, I don't know how about you, but I expect the president of Mr. Olympia, you know, showing up in the suit, you know, to be more formal. Yes. Look so at him. I, I want you to know that I, when I knew I was coming down to meet with you guys, and I'm yeah. such a big fan of Nebbia, you guys are great. Um, I threw on the Nebbia jacket that um, you guys created for the Olympia last year. And um, so I think starting tomorrow, I'll start putting the suit on. But it's still early enough in the week yeah. um, that we haven't really got into some of it yet. So. I love to dress comfortably as much as yeah, I can. These two are too much better than two. <laughs> Just go, go with this one. Uh, why did I ask you about that? Because uh, we are receiving a lot of testimonials from the athletes uh, regarding our jackets. And do you think that if you would name like top five or top ten words and things that comes at first place in your mind when you talk about Mr. Olympia, what place would uh, Mr. Olympia jacket take? The Mr. Olympia jacket is extremely important. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Because every athlete who steps on a stage around the world and hopes to try to qualify to compete at the Olympia, they dream of walking on that Olympia stage, winning the Sandow Trophy, the second thing, and getting a Nebbia jacket when they arrive. So the because here's what happens. Yeah. When the event is over, no matter where they place, whether they finish first or 21st, when the event is over, they will throw their jacket on, they will walk around the cities where they live, they yeah. will walk into the gyms where they train with that jacket. So and proudly. It, it is a proud badge yeah. of honor, and we're so grateful for this relationship and that you guys do such a great job. The quality, the stitching. Um, if you guys ever have a chance to really want to take your sort of fitness apparel to another level, um, Nebby is the way to go, and, uh, and we're just really grateful. Mm -hmm. We are grateful as well. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. An incredible answer because just. The second part of my question would be like what is the testimony if it's really true that the athletes care so much about this jacket or it's maybe just our well, point just of view. Just to give you an idea, you I actually it. feel guilty even wearing this jacket right? uh -huh. to be honest with you because these jackets um, I know are custom made um, for the athletes and I put this on today because you guys were kind enough to send me a jacket and, and I knew I was meeting with you and I'll wear this sometimes but I always feel like the ones who really deserve to wear it are our champions, are our athletes they get to walk around with the, with the jacket and uh, I know that's really important. And sometimes people will come and they'll call me up and say, how, how can I get my hands on one of those jackets? And I'll yes. say, here's how you can get your hands on it. You can start training, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get yeah. really good and uh, try to get to the Olympia stage. So uh, unfortunately guys, for this piece of clothes, you have to really work your ass off. Yes. But we, uh, we luckily have many other clothes that yeah, you can afford. Right. Last two questions. Are you in contact with athletes for all year long? Yeah, we try to stay in contact to make sure that uh, we're checking on them and make sure that they have whatever they need. We try to help athletes be successful and, uh, and maintain communication. Look, the, the, the contest in sport has gotten so big. This weekend alone, we'll have over 200 IFBB Pro athletes, over 500 amateur athletes. We'll have athletes spanning 10 different competitive divisions. Think about that. Yeah. That, that goes from the Mr. Olympia to the Miss Olympia, yeah. Fitness Olympia, Figure Olympia. Classic physique Olympia, uh -huh. men's physique. So you have a lot of friends. We, we get it. <laughs> the, the, the wheelchair Olympia, which is a great division, which you guys yeah. also provide jackets for, and yeah. we appreciate that. Um, but uh, the list goes on. The bikini Olympia, it's just a great. Uh, there's a lot to keep up with, so it's hard to keep up with all these folks. But uh -huh. we try it. Uh -huh. We try it. So in the in the last category, you got the most friends, right? That, that's well, <laughs> I think we use the word friends loosely, right? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I have great respect for all the athletes. Just, just a joke. <laughs> How many years are you president of Miss Ronnie? Only a couple of years. I took over. I was hired in 2018 to do this job. Yeah. Prior to that, I've been in many other roles in this industry as editors and um, you know all sorts of. Uh, I produced a movie called Bigger, um, which is a film about Joe Weider. You can see it on HBO. It tells the story of how Joe created um, kind of the world of competitive bodybuilding. Um, so I've had a lot of different projects and a lot of different involvements, but. Uh, for the last couple of years, my job has been to make sure that the Olympia uh, experience is good for folks like you when you come to town. 
Yeah, and the reason behind my question is the upcoming question. What was your the most strongest or memorable experience from Mr. Olympia? So I think it's always that first one. Uh -huh. In 1998, I attended the Mr. Olympia in New York City. It was the last time the event was held somewhere other than Vegas until, of course, this year. Dorian Yates had just announced his retirement. Ronnie Coleman showed up. He had finished ninth place the year before. Wasn't supposed to win the Olympia. Flex Wheeler was supposed to win the Olympia that year. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Coleman shows up, shocks the world, and begins what turned out to be one of the greatest runs in the history of the sport as like the iconic champion. And um, that was a special night, not just because it was a great contest, but it was a special night because it introduced me to this sport in a way that I had never seen before. And that's over 20 years ago now. And, and since then, I, I think I've taken a lot of that with me in terms, in terms of trying to like take things to another level and take stage production to another level and make sure that we're doing our part to grow the sport. But that event in 1998 was very special for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Don, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate all your answers. And I am personally looking forward for the weekend for the event. This is my first time, so guys, stay tuned for more videos. Um, as I'm here, I'm going to record it all for you. And I guess see you in the next one. Don't want to thank you so much. Yes. And see you.